Johnson and Lisa Sylvester on Channel 11 News, 11 at 11. Now, Channel 11 News. Coverage you can count on. Good afternoon, everyone. More than $1 million in damage, more than half a dozen firefighters injured, and a lot of questions today after a plaza in Penn Hills burns to the ground. Channel 11 has been covering this major fire since it started last night. I'm Peggy Finnegan. And I'm Damani Lewis. Good afternoon, everyone. The fire at Churchill Center Plaza started before the sun set on Sunday and was still going when the sun rose early this morning. Channel 11's Mike Holden has been at the scene for nearly 10 hours. Hours and Mike, the fire chief says things didn't need to end this way. Yeah, he stressed that we could have had a totally different outcome considering the circumstances, Damani and Peggy. We'll get to that in one second, but we do know this. This is a total loss, more than $1.5 million in damage. And you can see for yourself right now the aftermath. Look at this. This is the rental portion of this property. And you can actually see straight through these windows to that back wall where there are pieces and parts of furniture scattered everywhere. That back wall actually blew out, injuring a number of firefighters. And I have to show the video of the flames. Thick smoke and flames shot into the sky for almost 12 hours straight in Penn Hills. Fire destroyed the Churchill Center Plaza along Frankstown Road. A furniture rental business, dry cleaner, community service office, and wing shop are now no more. Fire crews were called out here around 7.30 for a fire at the dry cleaner. It quickly spread. Fire officials determined a gas line caught fire, which in turn caused a massive explosion. Four firefighters were injured and taken to the hospital after the back wall blew out, trapping some of them. Two more were treated for heat exhaustion and one for an ankle injury. Fire officials allege that had people's gas turned off the gas line sooner, their crews would be safe and the plaza could have been saved. However, the gas quite literally added fuel to the fire. Water became useless in their fight and the Penn Hills Fire Chief said this was extremely challenging. When you're able to walk away, you know, from a, from a fire after an incident like that, you know, it, it's... It's a win. You know, your, your, your vehicles can be replaced, your equipment can be replaced, um, but, you know, our firefighters can't. And he said it right, th right there. All of the firefighters have since been treated and released from the hospital, but we just got this statement. Look right here from People's Gas. They said in part, quote, saying there were three lines going to the plaza and they quickly shut off two lines. But it took a while to find the third line because there was so much emergency equipment and water in the area. The gas company is still investigating what role, if any, the gas line played in this fire. So out here live, clearly a lot of questions. But one thing is evident, the debris, the damage, the aftermath of this fire. Coming up on Channel 11 News at 5, Penn Hills residents are sharing memories of this location, which has been around for an extremely long time. Plus, their message to the firefighters who put it all on the line. Reporting live in Penn Hills this afternoon, Mike Holden, Channel 11 News. New at noon, a man from McKeesport will spend less than two years in prison after his son died of abuse. Channel 11's Lori Hoy was in the courtroom this morning as he was sentenced and joins us live. And Lori, the father didn't hurt his son, but the judge still said he should pay a price. That's right, Damani. The judge sentenced Andre Price Jr. to 11 to 23 months behind bars or possible alternative housing. In court this morning, he said he was sorry and misses his son every day. Now, back in April, Price pled guilty to child endangerment charges for not telling police his girlfriend was abusing their 17-month-old son. Price admitted that his girlfriend, Christian Clark, sent him graphic videos showing her abusing their son and threatening to kill him because she thought Price was cheating on her. Clark eventually carried out that threat. She also tried to kill her two-year-old daughter. Clark is now spending the rest of her life behind bars. Today in court, the prosecuting attorney asked for her harsher sentence for Price, saying to the judge that Price kept those videos on his phone and that he was the only person who could have prevented what we are doing here today. But defense attorney Jimmy Sheet said Price's sentence was fair and Price is remorseful. I think what he said to the judge about missing his son every day mm -hmm. was 100% heartfelt. And I think he, when he's told the judge that his youngest son looks a lot like the son he lost, that that was real. And he does miss him on a daily basis. And he asks, what if, every day. Now, Price was crying as he talked to the judge. I'll tell you what he said as I'm working on that part of the story for tonight at 5. Live from downtown, Lori Hoy, Chile 11 News.
Breaking news, drug maker Mylan says it will merge part of its business with pharmaceutical giant Pfizer. Channel 11 was first to alert you about this on our news app. Mylan is one of the largest public companies in the Pittsburgh region. It has an office in Cannonsburg. Under the deal, Pfizer would combine its generic drug business with Mylan, which also makes generic drugs. The combined company would sell Mylan's EpiPen and Pfizer's Viagra and would be based in the U.S. Channel 11 is looking to learn what this merger will mean for our area, and you can look for that part of the story beginning tonight on Channel 11 News coming up at 5. Well, police are still looking for whoever caused a dramatic accident on Duquesne Avenue in West Mifflin. Take a look here at the damage. A pickup truck hit four cars and a house. We sent a photographer to the scene overnight, and you can see the mess that's behind here. You can see a truck into a house and a smashed up car there. Three cars were parked in the front of the house, and police tell us the driver of the fourth car was taken to the hospital. Right now, we're checking in with police on the search for the driver. And we could see some showers or a little storm this afternoon. Yeah, meteorologist Danielle Dozier is in Severe Weather Center 11 for us. And Danielle, already hot and humid out there. Oh, goodness, is it? Definitely. I, you know, I just went outside, really hits you when you walk out, for sure. The humidity, even have people chiming in on social media, let me know about it. Here's a look at the temperatures right now at this noon hour. It's 84 already in Pittsburgh, 84 Beaver. If you're in Washington, it's 83 degrees. So, yes, we're all starting to sweat, especially when you factor in these numbers. These are the dew point numbers, mid, upper 60s, even 70 degree dew point in Greensburg. That is really humid, and we're going to continue to see these heat index values climb as the afternoon wears on. This is what it feels like right now, though, in Pittsburgh, 86. That's a common number from Greensburg into Washington and Beaver. 88 the afternoon high. Good thing we have a little bit of a breeze to help cool us off this afternoon, that wind out of the southwest. It's a mostly sunny sky for us today, everyone, but there could be an isolated shower or thunderstorm. I want to show you that map, and I'm also going to walk you through the more widespread rain and storms that are going to be coming in on Tuesday, coming up in my Severe Weather Team 11 forecast. Danielle, thank you. Well, a man charged in a 2017 shooting is expected to be sentenced today. Testimony in the trial against Daniel Bazell wrapped up last week. Police say he shot and killed Samantha Clavora while she was standing along Center Avenue in McKeesport. Channel 11 News at 5 will have the latest one in sentencing. Police in McKees Rocks need your help finding the person who shot two men over the weekend. We showed you this scene at Hayes Manor Apartment Complex's breaking news Saturday night. Since then, we've learned that one of the victims is just 17 years old. We're working to find out how the victims are doing today. A man is behind bars after police say he went on a shooting spree in Uniontown, Fayette County. Listen to these details here. Police say this man, Anderson Gregg, shot four people, leaving one of them in critical condition. They say Greg first went to a party on Pershing Court, fired a shot, then left. He then drove to a home on Dunlap Street, shot two people, then went back to the party and opened fire on two more people. Neighbors say this is the fourth shooting in Uniontown this summer, and they're ready to move out. Mm, it's scary. I mean, at any point, a stray bullet could come through a window or, you know, it could hit me or one of my babies. Police say Greg is a convicted felon who has committed burglary and robbery. He is not allowed to legally own guns. And chaos at a small California town festival where a shooter killed at least three people, including a six-year-old boy. The suspected gunman is also dead, but now police are searching for a second suspect. NBC's Jennifer Borkland is in Gilroy with the very latest. Gunfire at the Gilroy Garlic Festival and in the dense crowds at the end of the evening, there was nowhere to hide. This is actually crazy. Confusion and terror rippling through the crowd, and witnesses say as many as 40 rounds fired. An active shooter at the Garlic Festival. There was like a pop. We just, and we both turned and we saw him standing there, and he was reloading his gun. <laughs> Police engaging and killing the suspected gunman identified as Santino William Legan by a federal law enforcement official. Even though police response was fast, less than a minute, three innocent people were killed, another 12 hurt. You got two more wounded, beer booth three. A six year old boy among the dead. Stephen Romero's mother and grandmother also were shot, but will survive. Romero's father in shock. My son had his whole life to live and. 
He was only six. The gunman bypassed security and wore tactical camouflage gear carrying a high powered rifle. The indications initially uh, given to me is that they used some sort of a tool to cut through a perimeter fence to gain access. A massive search for a possible second gunman turned up nothing overnight. You know, you know, you always hear this kind of stuff on the news. You never know that it can happen to you. A volley of gunfire that, in less than a minute, ended three lives and changed this community forever. Jennifer Bjorkland, NBC News, Gilroy, California. A Twitter fight that the president started this weekend is not calming down. In fact, it is escalating. It all started Saturday when President Donald Trump tweeted that Democratic Congressman Elijah Cummings' district in Baltimore is rat infested and no one would want to live there. Well, that prompted a lot of blowback. Some critics of the president say the tweets were racist because Cummings is black, as is most of his district. The president's defenders say this is nothing new. The president here has some beefs with Congressman Cummings. I understand that, um, but I don't think that's the way to fix them. President Trump is not staying silent either, tweeting, there is nothing racist in stating plainly what most people already know, that Elijah Cummings has done a terrible job for the people of his district. President Donald Trump signed the 9-11 Compensation Fund Bill this morning. The bill permanently replenishes the 9-11 Victims Compensation Fund. It provides health care for the men and women who helped at Ground Zero, Shanksville, and at the Pentagon in the days after the 9-11 terror attacks. Well, it's summer break, but there's no break from viruses. The most common wa warm weather illnesses and how to protect yourself from all summer long. She's barely five feet tall, weighs 130 pounds, and is considered a threat by the FBI. Why the feds say they need to stop the pink lady bandit. And I'm tracking an increased threat for showers and thunderstorms when we'll be dodging the rain and even some severe weather. Channel 11 News, 11 and 11 means you get 11 minutes of news and weather before the first commercial. It means live coverage of breaking news, local news, and your first look at weather. All before the first commercial. Channel 11 News, 11 and 11. Watch. Eleven at eleven. Accurate details. Experienced coverage. Trusted weather source. I'm tracking a strong storm moving into Greensburg. All in the first eleven minutes of our newscast. Count on Channel Eleven News. Eleven at eleven tonight. Watch Channel Eleven News at six. Followed by NBC Nightly News at six thirty. New at noon, life is getting a little easier for local Target shoppers. The retailer says you can now call, place an order on its app, drive to the store. 
and have your stuff brought right to your car. The service is available at 18 stores in southwestern Pennsylvania. Well, just because it's summer doesn't mean we get a break from colds. We're getting a look at the most common viruses spreading right now. In the summer, we don't usually have to contend with influenza. That is mainly a winter virus. And it is true that viruses that cause colds are more prominent in the winter. But there are countless viruses that can cause problems for people. In the summer, we do see an increase in enterovirus infections. These viruses spread in the usual way, from touching contaminated surfaces or from coughing and sneezing. But they also spread from exposure to stool, which makes public pools a potential source of spread. Now, most viewers aren't old enough to remember the times of polio epidemics, but polio is a type of enterovirus, and it most commonly spread in late summer through swimming pools before chlorination became common. Now, in recent years, a different non-polio enterovirus called EVD68 has been in the headlines because it has an association to acute flaccid myelitis. That's a condition that seems to mimic certain elements of polio. EVD68 infections are more common closer to the end of summer. Enteroviruses most commonly cause a fever, sore throat, vomiting, and diarrhea. Coxsackie virus is technically a type of enterovirus, but it causes a very distinctive illness in children called hand, foot, and mouth disease. Now, this also typically increases over the summer. Fever, painful ulcers in the mouth, sore throat, and a rash on the hands and feet are the most common symptoms. Well, because we're talking about viruses, prevention really comes down to the same things, hygiene and, wash, and hand washing. The fact is just about every virus still circulates in the summer, even winter rhinoviruses. So don't be surprised if you catch a cold even on a hot summer day. Penn State is suing a Florida businessman claiming he is infringing on its trademark. Paul Partial does business as a sports beer brewing company. And Penn State says he counterfeited and infringed their trademark on several products, including the use of Penn State Nittany Beer. The university is seeking up to $2 million for each trademark counterfeited. Lead levels in Pittsburgh's water system are dropping. That's according to a new report released by the PWSA. It's not all good news, though. Listen to this. Those levels are still above the federal threshold. The latest report shows of the 176 samples tested from problem areas, 20 of the samples were above the action level set by the EPA. That's, less, that's four less than the last testing period at the end of 2018. PWSA says they're making adjustments and are continuing to replace lead lines. Teachers in the New Kensington Arnold School District could start the new school year with something they haven't had for the last two years, a contract. Officials told the Trib, last, uh, th the trib that the last negotiating session was productive and was in encouraging, but they don't have any more sessions on the schedule. The school board will meet August 22nd, six days before classes start. Some people are not getting their absentee ballots in on time to be counted. Uh, the new report shows that more than 4% of Pennsylvania's absentee ballots got to voting offices after the deadline to be counted. This was in the election last November. Pennsylvania voters submitted 187,000 absentee ballots in last year's election, and 8,700 were rejected, most for missing a deadline. The FBI is on the lookout for a bank robber nicknamed Pink Lady Bandit. Investigators say the suspect shown here in in a surveillance photo robbed two banks in North Carolina last week. She's also wanted for robberies in Pennsylvania and Delaware. In all, the Pink Lady Bandit has been connected to four bank robberies in three states in just eight days. She got the name because of a pink handbag she had during two of the heists. A heat wave has gripped parts of Ontario and is not letting go. Ground temperatures in downtown Toronto reached over 100 degrees yesterday afternoon, and the heat is expected to continue today. Health officials say children, pregnant women, and people working outdoors should take precautionary measures. 
your severe weather Team 11 forecast. A lot of these places across the world dealing with these excessive heat waves where they don't even have AC, such as Europe, as we were tracking last week. Now Canada, of course, we are tracking the heat and the humidity around our neck of the woods. Live look over downtown, and we're seeing a lot of sunshine out there. Take a look at our 24-hour temperature change. Pittsburgh running two degrees warmer than this time yesterday. Two degrees warmer in Greensburg. One degree warmer in Washington. We're in for the heat this afternoon. Temperature right now is 84, going up to a high of about 88 today. It'll feel closer to 90 when you factor in the humidity. And if you wanted to do a little grilling, the weather for the most part looks pretty good. I did mention that stray shower or thunderstorm possible, though. Looks like a lot of areas stay quiet. Temperatures this evening still very warm at 7 o'clock, 86, 84 at 8, and still 82 degrees at 9 o'clock. Here's our humidity forecast over the next couple of days. So, of course, yes, it's feeling sticky out there today. And if you can believe it, tomorrow it looks like our dew point numbers are going up even further, which means it's going to feel sticky to steamy. So we're seeing an increase slightly for Tuesday and Wednesday. Storm tracker is not going to show a whole lot for us this afternoon. I mentioned just the stray possibility of having something. And if we do have anything pop, locally heavier downpours, lightning, gusty winds would be main threats. Overnight tonight, we are looking at a passing shower possible. Rumble of thunder can entirely be ruled out. Same thing for tomorrow morning. You see that's a look at 6 a.m., a couple of showers up around Lawrence County. So it's a good idea, especially in the morning tomorrow, to check back in with Channel 11 Morning News, but also have your umbrella with you. It doesn't hurt. We're going to have rain for sure moving in by Tuesday afternoon. Here is a look at our weather risk for today. It's low. Again, just that stray, isolated shower thunderstorm. Tuesday, the rain becomes more widespread. We have a cold front, low pressure system coming in from the west. That's going to be sparking with the heating of the day, showers and thunderstorms. We get that lifting source in here to get these storms going. That's the cold front. So here it is, your thunderstorm forecast over the next couple of days. Low today, high Tuesday, medium Wednesday. That area of low pressure is going to kind of hang around through the middle part of the week, keeping our weather unsettled through Wednesday. Overnight tonight, it's pretty warm. 69 degrees. Can't entirely rule out a passing shower. 66 Washington, 68 in Beaver tonight. Tomorrow, 81. Scattered showers and thunderstorms. And all of us really going to be warm again, but not quite as warm as what we've had out there today. 81 Washington tomorrow, 78 Butler. So cloud cover kind of keeping us down a little bit. 80 Wednesday, scattered showers and thunderstorms. Thursday, dry. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, isolated showers and storms. Well, I'm not done yet. I'm going to walk you hour by hour through Tuesday's forecast, and some of the storms Tuesday could be severe. I'll talk severe weather threats for that day as well, coming up in the next half hour. Thousands of people turn out to honor a police officer killed on duty, but there's new questions about how the suspects were treated after the arrest. It's taken longer than expected to get started, but work should begin soon on a redevelopment project in Toronto. The big plans that are in the works. If you want to be prepared for all the things you need to do, wake up with Channel 11 Morning News. You'll get dependable, live coverage of breaking news from a team you can trust to get the facts and the story right. We'll connect you to the important news happening where you live. And with weather updated every 10 minutes, you'll know exactly how storms will impact your commute. Be ready for whatever your day might bring. Channel 11 Morning News is coming.
forecast now on your screen all the time on Channel 11 News. Crews are getting ready to start the project on the Parkway West, and it's going to affect travel for the next several months. Work begins tonight in Robinson and Collier Townships. The crews will be working on several improvements along the Parkway between Steubenville Pike and Campbell's Run Road, and this means you're going to see them around the clock during the week and overnight. On the weekend, work is expected to last through mid-November. Well, plans to develop more than 160 acres near the Torrenum Interchange along Route 28 are moving forward. The development known as Harrison Point would include a 100-acre township park, apartments for senior citizens, medical office, restaurant space, a gas station, and a grocery store. According to the TRIB, nothing has been built on the Harrison site in the two years since trees were cleared. That's because officials ran into some problems getting permits, but they hope to start construction later this year. Well, it won't cost you quite as much to fill up your tank this week. Over the past two weeks, the average price of regular gas went down two cents per gallon. Officials say lower crude oil prices are behind the price drop. The national average price for a gallon of fuel is $2.81. Pittsburgh's average is $2.99. But we did find it for two. 76 in Ohio Township. Smart traffic lights can ease congestion on the roads. But like any computer system, they are vulnerable to hackers. The steps Pittsburgh is taking to make sure the wrong people don't get control of the signals. And I've been looking at the data. I'm updating my storm tracker maps to show you when those storms will be rolling through the area on Tuesday. Severe Weather Team 11 on Channel 11 News now brings you the seven-day forecast on your screen all the time. During all of our weather reports, you'll see the forecast for the next seven days where you live. Watch Severe Weather Team 11 seven-day forecast on Channel 11 News. Better prepared for your day. Wake up with Channel 11 Morning News to get live coverage of breaking news, weather and traffic every 10 minutes, and important stories happening where you live. Watch Channel 11 Morning News. Channel 11 News at 5, when you want news from where you live. If I had the answer, I would solve it. 
I don't have the answer. That woman and her neighbors in McKeesport say they have seen too much violence around the city. This comes after a man was found dead inside a garage. We followed this as breaking news this weekend, and since then, we've learned the name of the person who was killed. Here's Channel 11's Amy Hudak. The man murdered has been identified as 22-year-old Tarif Delta McClellan. He was found in a garage detached from a house, and a woman who actually lives in that home was the one that made that shocking discovery. It's somebody's son or somebody's grandson. A 22-year-old man found dead, shot once in the head, and left lifeless in this McKeesport garage. Sad. It makes me feel sad, angry, upset. A woman who lives in the house says she came home from working a double shift, went into the garage, and made a horrific discovery. She says it was such a traumatizing experience, she packed a bag and will never go back to the house. Police telling Channel 11 she made the 911 call and is not a suspect. Detectives spent Saturday afternoon collecting evidence from inside the garage. Neighbors say Versailles Avenue has been riddled with crime and gun violence. We talked to a woman who says her son was murdered 10 years ago right outside of that same garage. It's a continuous thing here in McKeesport. McKeesport can't even clear a week without us hearing about another tragic incident, and it's sad. Neighbors are now waiting to learn who this man was as detectives launch a homicide investigation. People check on your kids, check on your son. Police say they do not have any suspects and they don't yet know of a motive, but they're also saying the victim was known to at least one person who lives in that house. At Allegheny County Police Headquarters, Amy Hudak, Channel 11 News. Well, showers and storms are going to move through Tuesday. Meteorologist Danielle Dozier is in Severe Weather Center 11 for us and uh, walk us through when the rough stuff's going to arrive. Yeah, so that's what I want to do because today I think it's going to be fairly quiet for a lot of people, if not everyone. Uh, but we look ahead to Tuesday because we're going to be dealing with some rough storms, I think, at times. Let me show you a closer look here. When you head out the door in the morning, there's going to be a chance of a couple of showers, maybe even a rumble of thunder. But once we get into the afternoon, that's when everything really starts to blossom. Them. This is a look at 1:30. You can see a cell over Pittsburgh, also one up here in Armstrong County, and then look at that two, three, four o'clock now. Showers and even in those thunderstorms. Thunderstorms showing up in the yellow and the orange colors. Look at five o'clock in the afternoon Tuesday. Here's the evening time frame, 8:30 p.m. So it's a day where we're definitely going to need our rain gear. And if you have any outdoor plans, you're going to want to stay weather aware because we will be tracking that risk for some strong to severe thunderstorms. I'm going over the threats with you, and I'm, I also want to show you how much rain we are expected to see between Tuesday and even Wednesday. And I'll do that coming up here in about 15 minutes. A man known for helping a lot of people in the community was shot and killed at a homeless shelter in Pittsburgh. Today, we have a picture of him. Take a good look here. His name is Sheldon Stoudmire. He was 57 years old. He worked at Northside Common Ministries Shelter for two years. Police have arrested 19-year-old Gerald Adams. Witnesses say he appeared to have had too much to drink, and Stoudmire was working at the time and wouldn't let him in. That's when police say Adams shot him. Adams is due in court next month. Nearly a dozen people charged in an undercover human trafficking and prostitution sting in Pittsburgh. According to a criminal complaint, an undercover officer made contact with the suspects after seeing ads online. They met up at predetermined locations and then were arrested by Pittsburgh police. Well, smart traffic lights are all over the city. They have sensors that determine how much traffic there is and they adjust stop and go times based on the number of cars. But they could also make Pittsburgh vulnerable. 11 Investigates Aaron Martin found out why the city asked college students to hack into its street light system. When you look at traffic lights, likely the first thing to come to mind isn't hackers or cybersecurity, but it's a reality here for the city of Pittsburgh, particularly along the Bomb Boulevard corridor. Now, 11 Investigates has found out that the city didn't go very far to make sure that these systems are staying secure. There's seemingly nothing out of the ordinary about the traffic lights on Bomb Boulevard, but the corridor is the first in the city to use artificial intelligence called SirTrack to read and monitor traffic and adjust the lights accordingly. When it comes to, you know, stopping a traffic light or turning them all green at the same time, right, we know the out outcome of that is higher 
uh, the higher risk. When the city of Pittsburgh implemented SearchRack, it hired students from CMU to hack into the system to find vulnerabilities and potential problems. Madison Oliver was one of those students. So we looked at um, wireless vulnerabilities, radio frequencies, um, the website itself, the cameras themselves. The goal is to be in the best possible position to fend off a potential hacker. The partnership happened before Santiago Garces took over as the city of Pittsburgh's innovation and performance director in December. But he says it follows a pattern of making cybersecurity a priority. Do you feel like the city is in a strong position in terms of its security? I think that security is uh, always a moving target and we take it seriously. For security reasons, the city and CMU declined to release any specific vulnerabilities that were found in the traffic system. But their results, Oliver believes, will maintain a safe environment for drivers moving forward. We had some really great findings, and I think the city can take those and be better. Now, the search track system actually was developed right here in Pittsburgh at CMU's Robotics Institute. As for the students that worked on finding those vulnerabilities, they tell me that that real-life experience is critical when it comes to protecting others. Reporting tonight at East Liberty, Aaron Martin, Channel 11 News. Well, thousands gathered today for the funeral of a military policeman stabbed to death in Rome. The 35-year-old died Friday while trying to arrest two American teenagers suspected of stealing a backpack. The church where the funeral is held is the same place where the officer got married less than two months ago. Meantime, as those young suspects sit in a jail cell in Rome, new questions are being raised about their arrest. Take a good look here. You're looking at a new photo that prompted those questions. It shows one of the suspects bound and blindfolded. Blindfolding a suspect in Italy is illegal, and officers say they don't know how this photo got out. On Friday, Italian police arrested the 18, 18 and 19 year olds, both from Northern California. Police say both Americans confessed to their roles in the officer's death. Under Italian law, anyone who participates in a killing can face murder charges. New details on the hunt for two murder suspects on the run in Canada. Officials are now expanding their search to a second town in Manitoba. Royal Canadian Mounted Police say they have received a tip the two teenage suspects were helped out of town. The teens are suspected of killing a North Carolina woman and her Australian boyfriend. They're also charged with killing a 64-year-old Canadian man. If you're planning a trip to Gettysburg, be careful. Bogus bills are being passed around town. The easy way you can tell this money isn't the real deal. Plus, we have information on the one group of Americans who use seatbelts less than anyone else. How you can make sure you're following the rules of the road. It's the summer of me. Like summer vacation. Cool off with some hot classic. Oh, isn't it wonderful here? <laughs> like Green Acres. The Three Stooges. <laughs> the 90-minute episodes of Wagon Train. The Dick Van Dyke Show. And much more. The Summer of Me. The Summer of Me. Me TV. You can find Me TV on Comcast 190, 207, or 1160.
Traffic, updated every 10 minutes on Channel 11 Morning News. A professional surfer is recovering after being bit by a shark near the Jacksonville Beach Pier. Frank O'Rourke says he was lying on his board when the shark latched onto his elbow. The shark thrashed around for about 30 seconds before swimming away. O'Rourke went to the sh went to shore and bang bandaged up his wounds. He says he's lucky his injuries are minor. I've literally been surfing for 20 years and now it happened. And you have more of a chance getting struck by lightning than bit by a shark. So. Honestly, I went and bought a lottery ticket today because I was like, you know what? The odds are in my favor now. Very lucky. He says he will stay out of the water for a few weeks to let his wounds heal, but then he says he'll be back to do what he loves. Well, it turns out more of you are buckling up, but one age group is not, and that's teenagers. More than half of the teens who died in crashes in 2016 were not wearing seatbelts. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration says seatbelt use is the most important factor in preventing death in an automobile. PennDOT offers resources for parents to help them teach their teens the rules of the road, and it includes a handbook. We'll post that on WPXI.com. Back to school spending can take a big bite out of a family's pocketbook. Yeah, you got that right. Well, the one group of parents who say they feel the most pressure to spend more than they can afford. And of course, the heat and humidity is one story, but so is the chance for thunderstorms. I've showed you the timing. Now I want to show you the severe weather threats and how much rain we'll see. You're streaming WPXI now. Your source for breaking news, weather, and original local shows. Amazing people are having a big impact all over rural America. Small town, big deal. Weekdays at 2 p.m. on W. cover the news the same way. Channel 11 covers news everywhere you live, not just downtown. More local news from more neighborhoods. That's a fact. Channel 11 News at 5, when you want news from where you live. Watch David Johnson and Lisa Sylvester on Channel 11 News 11 at 11. Well, for many parents, back-to-school shopping can be nearly as stressful as the holiday shopping season. According to a new report by Bankrate.com, 43% of parents have felt pressured to overspend when it comes to shopping for back-to-school items. The report says younger parents are most likely to feel pressure to overspend. Experts say it's always important to identify your spending triggers and set limits. 
Car makers have spent years and millions of dollars trying to keep us safe during an accident. Now, as Clark Howard explains, more attention is being paid to stopping an accident before it starts. Behind me is a Mercedes concept of a completely autonomous vehicle. And there's so much buzz about autonomous driving, but the reality is that's the future. Today, when you're looking for a used vehicle or a new one, look for safety features you can get right now. As an example, automatic emergency braking. That simple technology, not simple to make, but simple for you to have, automatically reduces the amount of accidents where somebody might run in the back of somebody by 50 percent. Huge savings in lives and in injuries that don't occur. We're in a phase right now where the technology available on today's cars and a lot of newer used cars will prevent accidents instead of trying to reduce injuries once you're in an accident. So look for things that help you stay in your lane that let you know that there's a vehicle in your blind spot and does that emergency braking. It could save your life. I'm Clark Howard. And you can see more from Clark Howard on our streaming app by searching WPXI on Roku, Amazon Fire, and Apple TV. Your severe weather Team 11 forecast. Hope you're having a great Monday. We're kicking off the work week with a mostly sunny sky and that heat and that humidity as well. Take a look, 84 degrees in Pittsburgh. It's 86 in Bethel Park, White Oak, Monroeville, both in the lower 80s. Expanded view shows the heat and that dark red shaded color. It is summer after all. 85 in Beaver, 84 right now in Pittsburgh. And this is actually running above average. The average high temperature for this day of the year is 82. We're not done yet either. The high is going up to 88 later on this afternoon. And of course, you couple that with the dew point, which is in the mid 60s right now. Very uncomfortable feel to the air. Our heat index values in the upper 80s to near 90 degrees in many locations this afternoon. Of course, well, you see the swimming forecast. Hot and humid. You'll need to stay hydrated. Wear that sunscreen, of course. At double eight through five o'clock, 84 degrees at 8 p.m. I did mention a stray shower or thunderstorm is possible, but still we're tracking the more widespread rain coming in for Tuesday. So overnight tonight, a passing shower. Same thing for your morning commute. A passing shower is possible, but once we get into the afternoon, we build in some heat and a cold front comes in from the west, we're going to be noticing more showers and storms. So they're going to become more numerous, more widespread in the afternoon. This is a look at 4 o'clock up around Lawrence County, Butler County, dealing with some heavier storms. Same thing here for the drive home, 5, 6 6 o'clock or so, the showers and storms will be pushing in from the southwest. Into the evening we go. You'll still need your umbrella if you're heading out. That's a look at 8.30 p.m. Tuesday. And we are looking at that risk for some strong, severe thunderstorms. Areas in dark green, including Pittsburgh, could be dealing with some severe weather, which will include damaging wind gusts as the primary threat. And damaging wind gusts are about 60 miles per hour or greater. That's when we start talking severe weather warnings. So we will be tracking that potential. There's also a look at some small hail out of the latest data and then locally heavier downpours. Widespread flash flooding is not expected at this time because of just how dry it's been through much of the area. We've actually put together six straight days in Pittsburgh without measurable rainfall. The last time that's happened, and it was actually eight days in a row, was back in December of 2018. So if you land under a shower today, could see a hundredth of an inch or so, not really looking at a whole lot again. Uh, but once we get into Tuesday and Wednesday, we are looking at the potential from about a quarter of an inch to three quarters of an inch of rain, especially on the high side if you get under some storms. 69 degrees, warm, humid with a passing shower tonight, 68 Greensburg, 68 Beaver. Tomorrow, upper 70s, low mid 80s, 81 degrees in Pittsburgh. A little bit of a breeze today out of the southwest. Tomorrow, a southwesterly wind continues, unsettled through Wednesday with a high of 80. Dry briefly Thursday, Friday 84, and then as we head into the weekend, still tracking a chance for an isolated shower or thunderstorm. We'll fine tune that forecast as we head into the end of the week and the weekend. Of course, you can check back for the latest weather updates coming up on the news at 5. A warning from Gettysburg police about fake money that's being passed off as the real thing. One of those fake bills, a 50, was left on the table at a local diner. A few weeks later, police say someone used a fake $20 bill to trick a man on the street. By the way, that fake 20 has 
motion picture purposes stamped on the front and back. It also says in props we trust. It's clearly a fake, but the punishment for using it, very real. Even though it's the movie money, it's, it's still going to be a theft by deception. They intended to deceive someone. The chief says HBO is in town filming, but wouldn't say whether it is the source of the bills. Well, she's only seven years old, and she's raised more than 11 grand for canines. Why a young girl from the Keysport says she cares so much about the police dogs. Join the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society for Light the Night. This special event brings together family, friends, and co-workers to celebrate, honor, and remember those touched by cancer. Participants help fund life-saving cancer research and treatments, giving survivors hope. Survivors like Nora and me. That's right. Visit WPXI.com slash Light the Night for more information. Help defeat the darkness of cancer and walk with us at Heinz Field on October 17th. When we walk cancer... Followed by NBC Nightly News at 6.30. A seven-year-old McKeesport girl has reached a milestone as she raises money for canines across the country. Peyton Estichin has raised more than $11,000. Her mother sent us these pictures of her visiting police departments throughout the country. She's donated protective eye gear, ballistic vest, and bite sleeves. She also raises money for vet bills. Peyton says she likes animals so much she wants to be a canine handler when she grows up. A World War II soldier killed in combat has finally received the burial he deserved. Private First Class William Brandenburg grew up north of Cincinnati. He was just 17 years old when he died. He was one of more than 1,000 Americans killed trying to take control of an island from the Japanese. His family spent decades trying to find out exactly Exactly what happened to him and give him the burial he deserved. Well, that finally happened on Saturday. Have you ever wondered what the inside of a World War II plane looks like? Well, you will have the chance to find out next month. The Wings of Freedom Tour will stop at the Butler, the Pittsburgh Butler Regional Airport. The World War II fighters and bombers will be on display August 15th through the 18th. And tours of the plane will cost $15 for adults. And if you have more cash to spend, you can actually even take a ride in one of the antique aircrafts. But those start at $400. Bucks. I'll just stick with the tour. Yeah, I like that idea, too. <laughs> That's all for Channel 11 News at noon. Our next newscast comes up tonight at 5. And, of course, you can get breaking news updates anytime right on our streaming apps. Just search WPXI on Apple TV, Roku, or Amazon Fire. Have a great Monday. Enjoy it.
storm. The seven-day forecast, now on your screen all the time on Channel 11 News. Our weather can change in an instant. Depend on Pittsburgh's chief meteorologist, Stephen Cropper, and Severe Weather Team 11, the most experienced forecasters, using the most powerful tools to keep you ahead of every twist and turn. Rain coming in during the morning commute. Without the hype. Just the